Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people like to welcome y'all to the show. Uh, another exciting show we have in store for you tonight. Uh, just some things I got to get uh, prepared, because what you're getting ready to hear is mind-boggling. It ties directly into the 1866 uh, Civil Rights Act that Byron Allen is using to uh, defend his case against uh, discrimination, uh, uh, i.e. discrimination contracts, meaning that uh, unfair practice uh, is being dealt to black-owned media companies in comparison to the millions upon millions that it uh, gives to its white media-based companies. And so he's using that 1866 Civil Rights Act to show discrimination and also violation of that particular act. Now, I'm going to show you how this ties into it. Uh, I mean, because I really, if you all... Don't recognize or understand the time that we're living in, you know, uh, or if you don't, maybe it's our job on this show, Verbal Pick Radio, to give you updates on the state of society in which we live in at this present time. Um, What they're getting ready to do, if Byron Allen doesn't win this case, then any company, any, any racist company can say, yeah. 98% 98% of my decision was based on the fact that you were black, true. But the other 2% was the fact that I just didn't like the shirt you had on. So I wasn't 100% uh, racially biased towards you. I didn't discriminate against you 100%. So you can't bring me up on charges of racism. Show you how this ties in. I'm going to read a little something for you all. <laughs> I'm going to show you how this all ties into the same thing. Right? You're not going to believe this, man. You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. But I'm going to read it anyway. You're still not going to believe it, but I'm going to read it. It states, George Zimmerman sues family of Trayvon Martin, the publisher, prosecutors for $100 million. That's right, you heard it. George Zimmerman turned around and is suing the family of Trayvon Martin, in which Trayvon Martin, 70 years old, unarmed black man, in which George Zimmerman was a neighborhood watch a security officer and killed the young man. We know the story. He walking home with a soda pop Skittles, uh, going to watch at halftime, coming back home to his father's house to watch the game. He shot. You know, he was being harassed. We all knew Zimmerman would get off. But if that's not uh, a knife in the back, he then turns around and sues the Martin family. If that's not a knife in the back, when he didn't receive any jail time for the heinous murder of Trayvon Martin, all of the so-called Gangsters or gangster rappers or street, you know, the ones who are busy shooting each other while you protest, but yet Zimmerman smiled and walked amongst you and played and mocked you, and now he's suing the mother of Trayvon Martin. It's, uh, hey, you know, what can you say? Continuing reading. George Zimmerman, the neighborhood watch volunteer acquitted of homicide charges in the 2012 fatal shooting of unarmed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin in Sanford, is suing Martin's family, prosecutors, and others involved in the case he claims rested on false evidence, according to a copy of the suit sent to the media Wednesday. Zimmerman is represented by Larry Clayman, that's K L A Y M A N, Larry Clayman, a high profile legal crusader tied to the conservative causes and the founder of Judicial Watch before splitting with the activist group. Come on. 
conservative. We know all the code words. We all know all the hidden words. We know what that means. All right. This is a um, this is a how dare you try to lock up uh, George Zimmerman for the murder of a black man. Yeah, we'll show you. Let me continue. The Polk County Circuit Court suit cites information in a documentary. Look, in a documentary about the case titled The Trayvon Hoax that accuses the Martin family of engineering false testimony. And the director has scheduled a press conference this week in Coral Gables to coincide with a film screening there. Now y'all get it. Byron Allen is suing Comcast for not allowing black media platforms and not allocating the same amount of dollars in promotion and advertisement as it does with the white firms. They're trying this case through the media. Byron Allen has to win his lawsuit. He, he, the stakes is too high for him to lose, is what I'm saying. As news of the lawsuit became widely reported Wednesday, the theater rented for the screening Coral Gables Art Cinema announced it was canceling the event. Coral Gables Art Cinema was not aware of all the details surrounding this event. The theater posted on Twitter. The suit seeks $100 million in civil damages, alleging defamation, abuse of civil process, and conspiracy. A copy of the suit was distributed to media, to media Wednesday by the movie's director, Joe Gilbert. The case appeared on the online docket of the Polk Count of the Polk Court system on Wednesday afternoon. The court papers say the suit was filed in Polk because Zimmerman lives there. It states all defendants have worked in concert to deprive Zimmerman of his constitutional constitutional and other legal rights. The lead defendant in the suit is Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon Martin's mother, who became a national figure in the wake of her son's death as a campaign surrogate for Hillary Clinton and a national advocate for social justice and reducing gun debts. She's running for the district number one seat of the Miami-Dade County Commission, being vacated by a term limited Barbara Jordan in the Miami Gardens area. Fulton's campaign issued a statement from Pamela Goodman, president of, of Roots List Florida, a political organization backing her commission campaign. It is both disgusting and shameful that George Zimmerman, a man who killed an unarmed child and got away with it, is now suing Trayvon Martin's grieving parents, Goodman said. Ben Crump, a lawyer who represented the Martin family and is listed as a defendant as well, issued a statement Wednesday that said, in part, I have every confidence that this unfounded and reckless lawsuit will be revealed for what it is, another failed attempt to defend the indefensible and the shameless attempt to profit off the lives and grief of others. Look, look. In a sick world, only in a sick world, such as the one we live in, can the murderer, well, no, let, let me rephrase that. Only in a sick world, such as the one we live in, where a man can have such little regard and disrespect and such hate, hatred for a black person to where he shoots him down, right? Even after the dispatchers told him, the police dispatchers told him, stand down, leave, leave, that, leave that alone. But yet, that hate, that, that, that I want, I, no matter what, I have to feel su- more superior than a black person. My whole self-worth, my whole life existence is to be above black. I, and he's not giving me the respect that Zimmerman 
in his warped mind deemed he should have gotten. So now he wants to wrestle with the young man. Now he's even more embarrassed because now he's getting beat. The young man's stronger than him. Young man takes him down. Now he's even more embarrassed, which he engaged, incited the incident. Then he kills Trayvon Martin. Then he says, well, I had to stand my ground because, hey, he started beating me up and I feared for my life. Well, why'd you mess with him in the first place? Leave him alone. You know what I mean? Leave him alone. See, that's the thing, man. That's that's why I don't get, look, look, and I want to make this, I, I want to make this, this very clear. I'm not on pastors and preachers in the church. Simply because I have something against. No, nah, because a lot of them are fine, upstanding individuals. I'm simply saying that the message that the slave master gave to the slaves and made that slave a preacher and that message that he was forced to teach the people has been passed down from generation to generation to generation, which made the parents passive and afraid because they were so afraid till they taught their child, especially their male child, how to act and behave so he can survive white uh, rage and white wrath. And it's being passed down today. We're not saying, look, we, you, look, stand your ground means if you fear for your life and and, and say a, a, a person like Zimmerman approaches you, even after police dispatchers told him, stand down, but he approaches you. You say, look, I don't have any problems, you know, uh, but but I'm afraid you, 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 you're coming up in, in my space. You know, you bother me. As soon as Zimmerman puts 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 his hands on you, you take him out. And you fight to stand your ground. You know, that that's that's the only way uh in incidences like that to save your life. But since we we we're we're taught to we, we, through that slave indoctrination, we're taught to wonder why first or 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 seek understanding from uh some racist whites who would never see our side of view because in order to see our side of view uh then that would deem us as equals and so in a racist mind they can never take advice from you because you're nothing even if you do make sense because now it's saying it puts you above them because you made sense or you made light of the situation, something that that person couldn't see. So now it gives you a, a degree up on them and they can't handle it. They key for that. So if you're going to stand your ground, stand your ground is what I'm saying. Stop teaching that. Uh, uh, stop teaching that passive. uh Way of life, which is getting folks killed, like black and brown. I'm sorry, it's it's you got rabbit dogs out there who study this thing, who uh, will um, uh, entice you into a confrontation, and soon as you soon as you say a verbal threat, I kick your ass, or or you come around me, I tear your head off. They gonna say they was afraid. You said those words. They pulled out. The gun they had to shoot you because they didn't know if you literally meant you gonna take their head off. They can say, "Well, I visualize him. Uh, you see how you see the size of him. I visualize him actually taking my head off. It frightened me so much I had to shoot him." So watch what you think, say, and do. Oh man, you gotta watch out. It. I mean, it's real out here. You look. This is white people might can live out a a character that they viewed on TV or in the, on, a, on a movie screen and try to bring that character to life in real life and act that way. They can do that. Black people, you can't do that. You can't be Shaft. You can't be uh, uh, Danzel. You can't be uh, Nino Brown. You cannot be the character that white people... And a lot of these characters, is, it was a, a, a invention out of white folks' mind when they wrote the story. You cannot be a character... And bring it out in the real world and try to project that off as being who you are. You can't go in a situation and you thinking you tough and and, and you, you you turn around and make my day. You, you you want a problem with me? You know what I mean? I'll rip your lungs from your chest. Okay, they take that as a threat. They gonna shoot you. Now, nah, only thing you do is be quiet 
And then you say, look, uh, in order to protect myself, please do not come within arm length. Understand that. As soon as they take that aggressive step to you like they ass up, that's your only recourse. I, it just is what it is. That's standing your ground. You know, that's how it's supposed to be done. That's but but that's not don't get me wrong, it has nothing to do with it. That's not um racism. That's just what men do. Men stand their ground because it's a lot behind that man. You got family, you got children, you got jobs, you got wives, you got so many things you have to take care of that you need to make it home. And so when somebody comes and threaten your your persons or threaten to do bodily harm to you, uh, because words are spells and it starts with a word, then words become action. So you have to take into account that those words is just a, uh, 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 it, it goes before the action. The word, then the action. So you have to be prepared and be ready at all times because you want to make it home. But if you don't value your life and you don't see your life as worthy or worth living, then you're going to make all kinds of mistakes. You don't know what's going on. They're going to pop you and so be it. That's the game. Now listen, this Byron Allen, y'all look up Byron Allen, 1866 Civil Rights Act. And it'll show you the basis. And you look and you even look at the uh, the the show that we did on Verpick Radio. You can watch it on YouTube, Byron Allen, 1866 Civil Rights Act with uh, Marcus Mudd. Uh we me and he and I uh did that show together in a great show. Um yeah. You have to um watch that show and understand Byron Allen has you understand. Know he has to win this case. Uh, if he don't, it'll it'll be like it'll be. It, it's not this, but like, we're just doing this as a comparison. It'll be like when they said the uh, African kings that sold blacks into slavery, meaning this one king was over all these people that gave permission to sell some of his prisoners, which was prisoners of war that he captured, into the hands of the European enemy. Meaning this Byron, Byron Allen case is similar to that because if he loses the case, then the whole dynamics of what race is will be on the forefront. It it it, it will be in jeopardy, you know. And so I hope he knows what it is he's doing. I hope his legal defense team is brilliant. I hope he even have sympathizers within the judicial system who's trying his case because the stakes could never have been so high as they are now uh, in dealing with this. Um, I don't want to go into it again because we did a whole show on it, but you all can look that up, but uh, pay attention Pay attention, pay attention. Uh, this all, as you know, before we go, I gotta stay. I gotta state it. This all goes back to the nation of Islam when it says, "Do for self." Been saying, "Do for self." Been saying, "Do for self." He said, "This man is a is a devil." He said, "He's not gonna change." You wait for him to change when it's not in his nature, and you still waiting. And with the verdict, hopefully, hopefully, it comes in Byron Allen's favor. If not, if you haven't prepared something for yourselves, uh, I suggest you get started. Because they would have the right to refuse you service not based upon your skin color. They can say it's just that color green that that person has on. It irritates my eyes. So I decided not to let him into my store. Yes, 99% was because he was black, but the 1% was his shirt, so it wasn't 100% discrimination. You got to 
you it, it's not based upon because you got to realize that the original act was saying that no black uh, organization company person shall be treated less than its white counterpart, and today they treat white people like shit. So it, it's it's just we got to see. We have to see. Verbal Pick Radio. We're out.